Another day, another patch for Infinite Warfare. This latest update kind of flew under the radar a bit. I wasn't aware that they were going to do a weapon balance patch so soon after the last one. But not only did they change multiple weapons, they hit a lot of the rig payloads with some nerfs as well. Now unless you frequent Reddit or Twitter, most of you may not know about any of these changes. So let's talk about the rig payload changes first. A whopping 7 rig payloads got hit with Infinity Ward's version of Lucille, the nerf bat. Most of these changes were simply in the charge time required to obtain them, but a few of them received harder nerfs than that. So first, FTL's phase shift cooldown time has increased from 60 seconds to 90 seconds. I think most of you can agree that this was probably a necessary change. Phase shift was tied for having the fastest charge rate out of all the payloads, and when used correctly, it could be very powerful. Likewise, Synaptic's rewind was also changed in the same way, from 60 seconds now up to 90 seconds. Now for some reason, Warfighter's overdrive was also increased from 70 seconds to 90 seconds. I don't know about you guys, but I can't even recall seeing more than a handful of people using this ability against me. Phantom's pulsar was also increased from 120 seconds to 150 seconds. Again, I hardly ever saw anyone run this payload, so I'm not sure why this was nerfed. The pulsar was also adjusted further by decreasing the enemy highlight time. So it used to tag enemies for 6 seconds, and now it only does so for 5. And to further deflate Phantom's ego, his active camo was again nerfed. So the duration has been reduced from 10 seconds to 7 seconds. Once again, I have no idea the justification behind this. I personally found the 10 second duration to be ideal, and shaving off 3 seconds seems a bit of an overkill. Speaking of overkill, they nerfed the hell out of Merc's reactive armor. Not only has the duration been reduced from 9 seconds to 7 seconds, but the health bonus you received as well was reduced from 133 health down to 114 health. The only buff to come out of this mess was to Striker's Gravity Vortex. This actually got a reduction in its cooldown time from 310 seconds down to 290 seconds. That's not a huge decrease, but it's noticeable. The patch notes also mention that Striker's Rig Body Unlock Challenge pertaining to Gravity Vortex was reduced from 3 kills with a single shot down to 2, but I don't see this as being live currently. Lastly, they fixed an issue where kills weren't counting if you died after shooting the Vortex or after it put itself away. So now let's cover the weapon changes. Since the PC players haven't got this patch yet, we won't know definitive numbers when it comes to these changes, but you should be able to get the gist of things. Surprisingly, the DCM-8 shotgun got buffed to include slightly increased damage and damage range. The epic version of the DCM-8, the Masochist, had one of its weapon perks changed. The lifelink weapon perk used to read as, infinite ammo inflicts self-damage when fired. So the Masochist used to be regarded as one of the worst variants in the game, as its ammo was tied directly to your health pool. So if you got shot, it took ammo away. Not only this, but shooting the gun made you lose about 2-3% of your health. Now, however, the lifelink perk reads as follows. Large magazine size. Taking damage fully regenerates your magazine. So instead of losing ammo, your magazine will instantly refill to 24 every time you take damage. The issue still remains, though. How often do you take damage and live to tell about it? More often than not, if you take damage, you're dead. So the epic Banshee Siren also got a weapon perk update. The shockwave perk used to read as, damage causes slight hearing loss. And now it reads as, improved damage while sliding, damage causes hearing loss. Without the coded stats or this variant myself, I'm guessing improved damage means that the pellet spread is tighter. More pellet hits equals more damage. It's not often we see a sniper buff, but the EBR-800 Osiris actually got a fairly significant one. It's the hunter killer weapon perk that's been updated. It used to read as, enemies at low health are highlighted. Now it includes the sentence, no sniper glint. I'm sure most of you know what the glint is, but if not, it's that blinding white light that reflects off your scope when you aim down sights, which alerts enemies that you're about to snipe their dick off. Having this removed on the Osiris makes you more discreet, allowing for more stealthy sniping. And speaking of sniper buffs, yet another epic sniper received a weapon perk update, the DMR-1 Spectacle. The reflex perk used to read as, comes with a custom reflex sight instead of a scope. This custom reflex sight now has a tracking chip built in and improved ADS time for all scopes. I don't have this variant myself, so I can't show you the new and improved reflex sight. But from what I've read, it's identical to as before, 
It just highlights enemies now, similar to the Trojan site. Next, two of the Kendall 44 pistol variants were changed. The Legendary Advantage variant and the Epic Cartel variant. Basically, these two weapon variants swapped their secondary perks. So the Cartel used to have the Steady perk, which reduced hipfire spread. It's now been changed to the Stability perk, which reduces recoil. So that means the Advantage now has the Steady perk instead of Stability. Surprisingly, the Hailstorm pistol received a buff as well. It got a slight increase in damage range as well as a decrease in time between bursts. If you saw my no idea what I'm doing special ops challenge guide, you'll know that I thought the base hailstorm was pretty bad. That burst delay between shots was horrific. This buff should help out immensely then. The next buff is to the epic rack 9 smoothbore variant. The one shot kill zone at mid range now includes the lower torso and the upper arms. And this is a huge buff. You'll still need a headshot for those long range one shot kills though. Next, the M1 Classic weapon received a nerf. They slightly decreased the return speed when ADS firing. This means that there will be a decrease in speed to its natural ADS position after recoil when you shoot. So basically, it'll be harder to line up and hit multiple targets. Oddly, the MacTav Classic SMG received a pretty significant nerf. The patch notes say it received a slight increase to recoil when ADS firing. However, any negative changes to recoil are significant in my book. I'm not a fan of this change, as the MacTav didn't really have much going for it over any of the standard SMGs. Now it's even harder to aim, even more so at mid to long range distances where it should have excelled. And lastly, the biggest nerf of all, the epic Mauler Mammoth. This sucker was nerfed into oblivion, very similar to the Gorgon from Black Ops 3. The Mammoth now has a slower ADS time and reduced movement speed. You're basically more or less an oaf when using this gun now. If you don't use Merc's Man at Arms trait, you'll feel like a koala bear crapped a rainbow on your brain. This is now the second official nerf the Mammoth has received. The first nerf of course was a few weeks ago, when a tremendous amount of recoil was added. I don't want to cover this nerf extensively in this video, as I've got an actual weapon review video in the works for the Mammoth. I'd say it's a good thing I put it off for a while, as my video would have been rendered useless now due to these changes. Hopefully this weapon will endure no more changes, as it's just a shell of its former self already. So the gist of this update would be that the top three payloads got nerfed. Reactive Armor, Rewind, and Phase Shift. Quite a few of the epic variants got much needed buffs, and a lot of nerfs were added to weapons that I personally felt didn't warrant them. So let me know in the comments what you thought of all these changes. Let's just hope Lucille's thirst for blood has been satisfied with these recent changes. I don't think I can handle many more game changing adjustments much less an Infinity Ward barbed wire bat to my cranium.